Project a ATV. We have uh, my son's four wheeler, as, as you've seen in other videos. We have been working on a speaker box for the front rack. There's the back rack right there. But uh, the project has expanded after Christmas. Of course, my son got the rest of his, his enhancements. It should turn out to hopefully look uh, more presentable for a Chinese four-wheeler, or at least more flashy. Hopefully not gaudy, but uh, there's the four-wheeler. The uh, speaker box right there, we did for it, I did start spraying it black, and then we opted not to because it was, the texture wasn't right. My wife and my son didn't like it. So I'm gonna to have to sand that back down and I am gonna to have to pick up the body fill. That should be fun. Uh, sorry, allergies. Um, going over here, here are the tires, the new back tires that are going on. They should be a lot more grippy. They look grippy. But I do have a, a video showing them side by side. Of course, these are for 11 inch rim. The, uh, he has a 10 inch rim, so I did reorder. Me and my wife uh, were on the phone when I ordered these and I was getting the sizes from her. I guess it was an inch off, but I'm gonna send these two tires back and get uh, 11 inch rim and it's going to be also 11 inches wide these two are 10 inches wide so it's going to be a little bit wider 35 inches tall and um, the factory or the tires he had originally on it were 22 inches tall 10 inches wide okay coming to the rest of the crap here is the uh, Boss uh, radio, it's a marine radio, and the two speakers. I did, uh, we did put this in the box, test it, see how well it was going to perform. Seems to sound fairly good, I was surprised. I've never bought Boss, um, but uh, it's not a bad little radio for what it's going to do. The uh, lights, of course, we went with LED lights because we're trying to reduce power consumption on the four-wheeler. So these are replacing all the uh, factory lights on the four-wheeler. And they're also a lot brighter. Moving in, here is uh, the 1500 Y amp. Uh, and sub. I have a review on this. Basically not 1500 watts, but probably about 240 watts. 1500 when struck by lightning. Then we go into the box of crap, which uh, is all the pieces and parts we're going to use to start hanging this. But we did pick up eight of these LED lights. They're from China. Picked them up for about uh, a, a song. All of them at work. I've tested every one of them. They're really bright. And we're just going to figure out where we're going to stick these on the four wheeler. It's always a good idea to have it as bright as possible. So if, uh, if my son is riding through the country, other people see it. Okay, got my amp mounted on the rack that goes up inside the box. I'm about ready to mount the radio, the speakers. You see, I put uh, some weather stripping from a door. From uh, you use that door jam down to seal it once the piece of plywood goes up in there. 
probably uh, pull it all apart and paint the plywood, or at least the uh, bottom side to ensure it's weather resistant. There's the sulfur box that would go on the back rack. Of course, the back rack is right there. So that's not going to happen. I'll probably just set it on the seat for testing. There's our pile of scrap wood. And here is our trailer wire. This is going to be used to power the radio and the amplifier, uh, wiring it into the ignition of the four-wheeler for, so it's not always on. That would be so stupid to have it turn off and on with the toggle switch. But next video, hopefully we have this semi uh, put together and playing. Okay, we're going to start cleaning up this wiring on this four-wheeler. You saw that one's just hanging down there. We're going to run it up through here where the other wires come out. Uh, probably wrap them up in uh, electric tape to uh, help protect them. I didn't order any of the sheathing. Um, also need to put an inline fuse in between the battery and the power output. So I don't burn up any wiring or anything like that. Okay, tighten up the speaker wires, I mean the, the wiring in the box. That should uh, help keep them off the amp. The amp was not hot at all, so hey, the amp is turned all the way down. Way too much amp for a six inch sub. Uh, probably need to go with that 10 inch before we put the uh, finish the subwoofer box. And uh, we're probably going to shape the subwoofer box more to, because we have a lot of shape on the, the uh, front speaker box. So it really doesn't look alike. But that's the wiring. Here's the wiring for the subwoofer. Of course, it's just electric taped right now. Um, right now it's really long. I don't know how long it's going to be or where are my bread so the reason for that got the uh, radio sort of installed the uh, amp rack is not screwed in we're still doing some fine adjustments to that the amp does make a tad bit too much power for the subwoofer it's uh, the AR 1500 or 1500 M, it's a mono. And uh, we looked at that earlier in the video. It has the 30 amp fuse, and I'm guessing it can make about 240 watts, which the limit on our 10 is about, I mean, our, our 10, we have a six and a half inch sub, is about. 100 watts is what the book says. I doubt, uh, I doubt we would even handle that. Maybe if it was pure clear watts, but there's the subwoofer, of course. The box isn't complete. I have it sitting on where the rack bolts up for the four-wheeler. Uh, my plan is to tur turn them ports down towards the fenders to give something to for the low frequency base to reflect off of. And I may opt in the future to go with a eight or a 10 inch sub, hence the size of the box. But it responds really well. In fact, it is extraordinarily loud for an ATV for a uh, speaker box. It will run on the battery haven't uh, done any real world on it, but we were running, uh, running it on the battery, and now I have the battery charger on it just to make sure the battery doesn't fall below a certain voltage. Here I have a, uh, a 
I've used this before, but I have a, about 35 hertz running through the speaker right now. Um, you see the bar is really low. Let me start turning it up. I'm going to shut up now. frequency sweep. This is a tone generator. Of course these are all apps you can get free. Okay so I was right it's 34 Hertz is where we're sitting at. If I go much lower than that you start to you can't even hear it. You see the speaker is moving, but it's unusable. Now as I run up, the garage door will start shaking at about 40 hertz, about 44. sit you down while I look for some real music. Okay, I have this uh, Dramatic Music Max Epic Intense royalty free music. Um, I was playing it a little bit earlier. Hopefully it doesn't have too much bass boost. That really jacked me up. But we'll go ahead and play it. Up here on the four wheeler. I don't know if you can hear the same sound stage I am. so I'm not going to turn it up too loud but just to say it does play it is running on the four wheel of battery and it does sound good you can't depict good sound on YouTube but it does work <laughs> Okay, 
So, as I'm playing that, it does shake the entire four wheeler. Thank you for watching, and uh, have a great whatever. Okay, we got the uh, speaker system installed on the uh, ATV, got it wired. The amp rack is still not screwed in the bottom of that fiberglass box, but we're replacing that six inch sub. It, uh, it won't handle the power. It doesn't sound very good. And uh, when you crank it up to where it does produce adequate volume, it almost sounds like it's gonna blow up. Speaker system is wired. Turn on the key and the radio comes on. Turn it off, it goes away. But that uh, six inch spe speaker is going to be replaced by a Pioneer Dual Voice Coil 12, uh, 10. Um, the frequency response on the 10 is far better than this six. It's a better brand of speaker. It's actually the first, Pioneer was the first uh, subwoofer I ever had. I got two Pioneers when I was 16. Had them in a uh, Dodge pickup, 80, 86 model, step side, slant six. Absolutely no power. But there's the side profile on the four wheeler. Some the tires, we have started putting the lights on. We got the front light on that replaced the, uh, the headlamp that was on the front of the four-wheeler. There's going to be two LEDs on either side for more of a 360 type view. There's going to be a LED uh, brake light and then we're going to mount blue LEDs along the fenders. So the blue LEDs will, when the uh, lights are running, the blue LEDs will be off because uh, they are very bright and I don't want them impeding his vision when he is night driving. Okay, we have the headlights mounted, or uh, the new headlights that replace that. Uh, one headlight on the steering wheel mounted. You see the rack is off. We had to run the wiring and we ran underneath this right here, which there's a nice space in here that you can do a lot with. But here's our multimeter we used for making sure we we're using the right lights. But Brand, go ahead and turn off the lights. We'll sh display how bright these are. So they're, they're, wired with the lights we haven't got the parking lights done yet but there's it should be more than adequate to uh, brighten up an area of course the camera light probably doesn't help much but go ahead and turn them on okay We've uh, ran the LED lights on the four-wheeler. There's the front lights. Here's some more LEDs. And then, uh, all the way around, they're gonna work with just the parking lights so they won't be blinding. We still have to, uh, the tail light is coming. And uh, I got some new connectors for the battery. When they, uh, the uh, dealer who sold this, they took it and they uh, cut off all the connectors so it would, uh, I guess, be easy to connect the battery. They didn't actually take the uh, screw off and connect the battery correctly. So we're going to get that correct corrected. Um, there was a rubber strap holding this in. The seat holds in the battery pretty well, so I'm not worried about that right now. But, uh, here we go. We'll have these uh, LEDs 
wired up and we'll do the light show. Okay, uh, found out when we start the radio we have a bit of noise and also the reception is poor. So we picked up these little filters from Amazon from by Boss. The filters are well, they're, they're not metal. This is a plastic case. There's no, not going to be any heat shielding from this. If you shake it, you'll see that they just put a pretty case around the actual filter. So, but it does give me screw holes so I can mount it inside my box to keep it from bouncing around. I have two of these. Picked up this to filter uh, the outputs from the radio to the amp if needed. And then this lovely rubbery antenna. So the rubbery antenna is going to go on to improve radio reception. Back to the four wheeler. Go ahead, I have the radio on. I'll go ahead and crank it. If it will start. Looks like we have engine noise coming out of the front speakers. I'm guessing the the amplifier on the back speaker has a, a built-in filter or something of that nature. So we're going to apply a filter. First we're going to apply a filter going from the uh, key ignition to the radio. See if that uh, gets rid of it. If not, we'll put a filter on the power coming directly from the battery as well. And if, if we only need one, then we can send the other one back. And so I've only opened one right now to start with. So, I'm gonna get started and uh, see how this works. Okay, see I had the ground run there. This is coming from my key ignition. This is the, the blue wire going to my power output. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, try to crank this up and see how it sounds. Okay, now on this uh, Boss filter, you have a positive here. This is from uh, your positive source, which on this is going to be to our ignition. And here's your negative. I'm just going to take this to the negative on the amp right here temporarily or maybe permanent I haven't figured out yet to uh, ground it and then this goes connects back up to our positive wire here feeding into our radio to turn it off and on with the key um, boy I couldn't use this to filter the amplifier burn up this thing's only rated at, I think it's, I say 15 amps or something like that, but I don't think it, looking at the side gauge of this wire, it wouldn't hold up too much. You wouldn't buy this thing to filter any audio noise you're receiving to your amp. Your, your gauge on your wire is so small, that would be a heavy point of resistance for you're, if you're running any kind of decent output audio equipment, which all this is boss cheap crap. Okay, Let's start it up. Oh. Still have the sound. So, we're going to have to filter the power coming from the battery. Okay, have both noise filters in place. I'm not very impressed. I still hear an occasional pop from the speakers. Um, it is not a 
It's it's probably has to filter a lot due to this four wheeler. But let's go ahead and crank it up. Okay, you'll get the occasional pop, but not near what it was. I'm going to go ahead and uh, plug in the subwoofer and uh, see, see how everything works. Uh, finish, finish it up and screw it down. Thank you. Okay, we've gone to the country. The speaker box. I think it's just going to be too much for the uh, generator on the four-wheeler, but this one will work. Um, probably going to change this up to take the amp out and put a port because there is decent bass coming from these six-inch speakers. Nothing like the ten, but enough for a kid. We'll use this on some other project. Now let's go out there's the dog you lazy dog lazy dog okay come to the four-wheeler lights work wonderfully in fact they are extremely bright go in here sit this down get back up put the brake on of this thing is awesome even with the larger tires it still it still does great uh, the new CDI and things like that it actually pulls much stronger than it ever did so the Goofit CDI was uh, well worth the purchase and they're cheap Mr. Papran was flying down the road.
What is that clicking noise? Let's figure out what that clicking noise is. 